Hi everyone, it's Romain from the Kotlin Coders team. In this video, we will see how to use a dependency injection library in your Kotlin multi-platform project. I will walk you through the basics of the dependency injection pattern and the materials we have at our disposal in the Kotlin multi-platform context using the Kotlin DI library. First, let me remind you why you should consider using dependency injection and what are the benefits of a DI library. In software development, using dependency injection is the most popular technique to address the principle of separation of concern. Its goal is to free objects of any responsibility but their original purpose. Let's take an example of an application working with users that is capable of retrieving data from an HTTP API and also works offline with a local database. Here is the code we could write to make such an application. Here, the different classes are responsible for their functions behavior, but they also are responsible for creating the objects that need to work properly. A more idiomatic design would be to separate all the objects creation from their call site by defining them as external resources, for instance, as constructor parameters. This removes the responsibility of creating dependencies enables code reusability and should help you mock and test your code easily. Now, the simplest thing you could do is to manage your dependencies manually, instantiate and inject them in a global context accessible from anywhere in your application. However, this comes with a cost. Testing the different units becomes a challenge because our instances are tightly coupled with the injector object. This means that we'll have to know how to instantiate our object and dependencies and how they are used before plugging everything manually. This is where a dependency injection library helps. A DI library gives you the tools to define the dependency graph of your application and will be able to dynamically inject the right dependency when needed. It also gives the ability to swap objects instances and replace them with different implementation in an easy and readable way which removes a lot of pain points when testing your code. So now let's see how to configure and use CodeNDI, our favorite dependency injection library for Kotlin multiplatform. CodeNDI has never been easier to use and configure in Kotlin multiplatform project. All you need to do is to define a dependency in the common source set of your Gradle build file and you're done. Thanks to the Gradle metadata published along with all the code in the binaries, Gradle will be able to attach the right binaries for each target of your project. Note that we highly recommend to use Gradle 6 or higher, which enables Gradle metadata by default. To see how to use code in the eye, let's take our last example where every class receives its dependencies as constructor parameters. In our common source set, we can define a DI container that will provide all the needed dependencies. Thus, we can bind straight instances, singletons, or even constants. There are some other use cases where code in DI can shine. For example, let's say that you want to handle multiple databases, you could use tags to bind multiple instances of the DB object and use those tags to inject the proper instance when needed. We are also able to bind more volatile objects through providers and factories. A factory will be executed every time the DI container asks for it. When using a factory, you'll have to pass arguments to the instance function to get its result. If you don't want to bother managing your dependencies via constructors, maintaining an API, a certain order in the parameters, and so on, you can pass around the DI container while writing your bindings. Therefore, you should be able to call every binding from that container. We can go further by using the DI-Aware interface. Every object that implements DI-Aware needs to override a DI property as a DI container reference. This interface provides shortcuts to the container like the instance delegate. When declaring your bindings, all you have to do is to pass the DI container itself within the binding declaration. When working on bigger projects, we recommend to split your DI container into modules to organize your code or even be able to swap an entire block of dependencies. 
For example, we could define a module for the app utilities and one for the user business code before importing them in a DI container. Now that we know how to bootstrap code in DI in a Kotlin multi-platform project, let's see how we can easily swap our bindings and test our code. With code in DI, every dependency is resolved lazily when needed. This means that you, that you don't need to mock an entire module if its bindings aren't useful for your test case. For example, we can define a mock user module that overrides our app user module while importing them in a local DI container. Now, our user service object uses a mocks, mock user repository and mock user API internally, meaning we can focus on unit testing the behavior or user service. In this video, we explain what is a DI pattern and how to solve it with code in DI in a Kotlin multi-platform context. Now what remains is to use our business share code within your favorite platforms. We will cover this in further videos for both Android and iOS with some architectural approaches. That's it folks. Thanks for watching and see you next time for more content on Code in the Eye.